exciting day for for Saluki football. You know, it's uh, as I came in uh, this morning, it, it just kind of reflecting back on our time here um, as a coaching staff. This is our sixth signing class, and so it goes by quick. And th this day is an, always an exciting day. Uh, you spend so much time recruiting these guys, and and a lot goes into a, uh, a signing class, especially in in football. Uh, whenever you're recruiting so many kids and, and your signing classes are, are a little bit bigger. This year has, has been met recruiting uh, with a lot of challenges, uh, just like a lot of things in 2020. Uh, I'm proud of the way our staff uh, quickly adjusted uh, to, the, to the dead period and not, not uh, being able to get out all the way back into the spring recruiting. Uh, we weren't able to get on the road, weren't able to have guys on campus this summer. We weren't able to get out to camps and watch these guys in person. Uh, so your evaluations and the, the, uh, the amount of information that you had to collect uh, was, was very important. I feel like uh, taking, taking kids from programs that, um, that, that we've, we've taken um, kids before, uh, the relationships with your high school coaches, uh, I think were huge. And so... Uh, we are excited about the guys that we're adding uh, that, that are going to come here and, and be a part of Saluki football. So um, it's, a, it's an exciting day. I know for our staff and our families, um, that they, they are all excited. Uh, they, they put a lot of their, their heart and soul into to recruiting these guys. And when you finally see that, that piece of paper come, come through um, and make it official, it's a, it's a good feeling. So. Um, we're excited that we have all those in. Um, we'll probably add a couple here uh, in the next couple of days. And then, uh, like we've always said, I mean, recruiting uh, never stops. You're, you're constantly recruiting and looking for ways to improve your team and your roster. So, uh, but I'm going to go through each, each guy here, uh, talk to them, talk about them a little bit, and then uh, I'll answer any of your questions. Uh, the first one, uh, TJ Atkins uh, from, from Cardinal Ritter. Is a, is a guy that, that Coach Watson, once he got here on staff um, this spring, it was is the number one guy that, that uh, when he came here that, that we, we wanted to go get. And a lot of these guys have been committed for a while, and TJ's the same thing. Uh, you know, St. Louis, like, you know, Illinois not playing high school football. Uh, a lot of these kids' senior seasons have uh, been disrupted. Uh, he was able to get some some uh, some games in and, and made a, a really a great run uh, for his high school. The thing that impresses me the most about TJ is that um, he played wide receiver and that's what we've recruited him as. Uh, but he was asked to play quarterback his senior year because it was what was best for the team and um, led his team into a deep playoff run and uh, was a team player. And that that's what we're looking for. If you can. Uh, I always say that if, if your high school coach puts the ball in, in your hand as a quarterback, that's probably because he trusts you the most. And uh, that's what really sold me on TJ. So we're excited about him. Jalen Bates, um, Oak Park River Forest up in Chicago, another kid that we've recruited for a long time, an early commitment all the way back into the summertime. Uh, you know, he comes from a great family and uh, is a cornerback that, that we had pegged high on our board from the very beginning. We were able to get him to commit. Uh, he's done a great job with, with all the other recruits uh, selling this place. And so we're excited about Jalen. Jalen's going to early enroll into school and be here in the spring. He won't be eligible for our spring season, but it'll be, uh, it'll be nice to have him get a jump start and get here training and uh, get to practice with our team this spring. And that'll be huge for Jalen, another great kid that we're excited to have. Sam, Sam Buck from Highland, Illinois. Uh, he comes from a, a, a great program. Coach Warnicke is one of those guys, too, that, that we've built a relationship over time that uh, when, when he says someone um, can play, we trust that evaluation. And uh, you know, Sam isn't able to have a senior season yet, Hopefully, all the, the Illinois high school uh, teams will get an opportunity to play in the spring. Uh, but he's a physical, hardworking um, type of kid that we want to, to bring in here to play on our offensive line. So, uh, you know, when you see Sam Buck, uh, you'll say that that's an interior, uh, tough, hard-nosed offensive lineman. He's got the mullet. 
He's got the, the he's got the look down, and so we're excited about Sam. I like his personality. I like what he brings to the team. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about. <clears throat> there's a couple transfers on here. Talk about James Caesar. Uh, this is the second time that that I'll talk about James signing uh, with Southern Illinois. James was a part of our first recruiting class, and uh, in 2016, and I, I just can't tell you how excited. Uh, I am that, that James is going to be able to come back here in a unique opportunity to, to really play two seasons, the spring season and next fall. And uh, James was here, started a lot of games for us in the secondary at corner, at safety, uh, battled some injuries while he was here, uh, transferred out, got his undergraduate degree, played excellent last year uh, at his previous, previous school and, and an opportunity um, came where he could uh, grad transfer back here and, and uh, I'm super excited about James. James has been a part of this family like I said from, from day one when we recruited him out of, out of uh, Detroit and uh, he's an outstanding kid. Uh, he's grown into a, a great young man. Uh, love his family, love his mom and uh, James is a player. Uh, he's a high level player that's going to immediately uh, fit right back in. All these his teammates know him uh, you know, from the, all the fifth-year seniors and, and half this roster has played with James. So it'll be a seamless transition back and uh, can't wait to see him back on the field making plays for the Salukis. Um, <clears throat> Michael King from German, Germantown High School, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, another kid that, that hasn't been able to play his senior season. So I, I really feel like he's a guy that would have had a, a huge senior year and uh, maybe even a guy that we wouldn't have been able to get if he played a senior season. And so uh, outstanding young man. I love the way he carries himself. I love the way that uh, uh, his maturity, uh, his commitment in the classroom, excellent student. And uh, so we're, we're excited about him. Just a long athletic wide receiver uh, that we ca I can't wait to get in the weight room, get with our strength and conditioning staff, develop, because uh, he's a playmaker and we're, we're excited about him. Uh, Leviticus uh, McAfee, um, you know, Levi is a big, long corner. That's what I said. We've had, we've had um, a lot of uh, success with long DBs, and, and Levi is one of, those, um, one of those guys. I mean, he is a, he's a long corner that can do a lot of things. Uh, can't wait. Like a lot of these guys, uh, you know, when you see him in two or three years, you'll know if we did, we did our job or not as far as developing these guys. He's got a ton of room for, for growth. Uh, and uh, at 6'2", he can play multiple positions in the back end. And, and that's what we look for, guys that can play multiple positions. So we're excited about Levi. We're excited about his family, another great student. And uh, he's going to make a great, great Saluki. John Nally um, for, from Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, we, we're excited about John. Big, probably the biggest kid on, on, this, uh, on this list. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a tough kid, uh, hardworking kid, uh, not from, from not too far away that, uh, that we, we've liked. We've got four offensive linemen on th this group, and I feel like that's, that's a, a – a, a position that you see now that, that we've been able to develop our offensive line over time. And that, that's a position that you've got to take four or five kids a year. They've got to come here. They've got to put their head down. They've got to continue to develop. And then in, in two or three years, those guys are ready to play and be, be starters for you. And if you look across our offensive line right now, uh, the consistency and the guys that we've been able to develop from high school, from signing them straight out of high school, um, is, is really our plan on how we want to go about recruiting offensive linemen. So we're excited about John, his family uh, coming up here and, and being Salukis. C.J. Parson, another, another Memphis from White Station. Um, I'm excited that we're able to sign a few Memphis kids in this class. Uh, it's, a, it's a city that's got a, a rich tradition up here as Salukis. And uh, C.J. is another kid that wasn't able to play as a senior. And uh, another kid that we feel like if he was able to have a senior season, I think he's, a, uh, he's an FBS level talent. I feel like those are the type of kids that we're signing here. Uh, he's another long DB that, that can have some, some flexibility in the back end and play. He'll start out at safety. 
Um, but another kid, he's got a 27 on his ACT, smart kid, intelligent, uh, long and rangy, uh, perfect combination for, for the success that we've had with our DBs, uh, you know, four of them playing in the, the, the National Football League right now. Uh, he has that type of makeup. Um, obviously, he's got to come here and develop, but we've loved CJ for a long time. Del Monte Pryor out of Jones High School in Orlando. Uh, there, there hasn't been a signing class. I don't believe that we haven't signed someone from Jones High School. And so uh, we've had a long history uh, going all the way back to with me, Simon, being the first guy that we took out of Jones. Uh, but we, we've currently got a few guys uh, on our team from Jones High School, PJ Jules, Calvin Francis. Uh, we've had several guys that have come up here and graduated from Jones and Del Montres. Uh, an, another, uh, another guy that, uh, that, that we feel like just is, is tough, hard-nosed, loves the game of football. Uh, and is appreciative of his opportunity. You know, Jones is a, from my time being down there and, and coaching in high school, Coach Wills and then Coach Anderson, I actually coached with in high school. So it's another program that we feel confident uh, in when we take kids from their, from their, uh, from their school. So we're excited about Del Montre and the, 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 on the defensive uh, secondary. Uh, he's a kid that's physical and can hit. And so I think immediately he'll come up here and make an impact on special teams and, and find a niche in the back end that'll help our team. Aiden Quinn, uh, state champion. I saw him put up, I think, his, his record in high school, 48-3, and three, three state championships. Uh, can't say enough about him. His dad's the head coach. Uh, when you talk about tough, smart, winner, uh, that's what this kid is. And, um, and he's a coach's kid. His dad played in the NFL at quarterback. Uh, he knows what it takes. He, the expectations and the standards that he holds for himself uh, that, that he's already been used to, he'll come up here and, and be ready to work and be ready to, be ready to go. Um, he, he'll, he'll start out in the tight end room, feel like he can be a, an outstanding guy that we can move around. He's a great pass catcher, um, and, and he's a physical kid. And in our league and what, what type of offense we like to run, uh, we play with multiple guys uh, at the same time. And so he's going to add uh, great value right off the bat uh, as soon as he gets here. Uh, Caden Reeves signed his brother Peyton last year, uh, and um, we were excited about Caden. And, and so it's a, it's a great family, unique opportunity. We've got several brothers uh, on this team. It's kind of unique. I don't know where we rank in the country with the amount of brothers, but with the Maddox brothers, <clears throat> the Cox brothers, um, you know, we've got uh, the Strong brothers. Now we got the Reeves brothers. So four sets of, of brothers on our team. And so we're excited about Caden. Uh, outstanding uh, young man, comes from a great family. Uh, hard-nosed kid, uh, and so we're excited to put him in, in Coach Tuka's uh, D-line room and develop and, uh, and and get to work. So we've been excited about Caden. Obviously, from recruiting Peyton, we've known Caden for a long time, and uh, that's what we talked about today. It's been a long time coming. It seems like we've known him for, for a long time, but time goes by pretty quick, and now it's his time, and uh, we're excited that signing day came, and we've got Caden being a Saluki. Raheem Rowe. Uh, from Creekside High School down in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, just a, a kid, again, that, that we were able to get committed back in the summertime. And so uh, he's been with us for a long time, had an excellent senior season, feel like he's gotten better. Uh, again, I just, I've talked about the, uh, the, what, how we want to go about recruiting the, the offensive line. Uh, it's uh, bring in kids that are ready to work and are going to get in that weight room, get out on the field and develop. Uh, you know, college football is a, a game that you have to be able to develop your team. And I think that we've proven that when you look at uh, that our offensive line, how it's evolved over the years, it's been through hard work and guys that have come here and just put their head down and developed. And we're excited to get Raheem in there as well. Jacquez Sloan, uh, transfer wide receiver uh, from Western Kentucky. He's a kid that's explosive. He's a playmaker. He's a kid that uh, needs the ball in his hands to make plays. And, um, you know, he did that. He proved that at, the, uh, at Western Kentucky uh, in the Sun Belt. Uh, so he's a kid that's coming here with a lot of experience. He, he's played for three seasons. 
He'll have the spring season and the fall season for us to play here. And so we're excited to get him in this offense, get him up here here in a few weeks and, and, and get rolling. And I know Saluki fans will be excited to see him out there playing for us uh, this spring. Uh, Ethan Tyler, uh, a kid from over in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, we're excited about. Again, I keep talking about our offensive line, but I, I truly believe this, that, that you're not going to win any football games if, unless you're uh, built um, from the inside out as far as up front offense and defensive linemen that are going to come here and develop, be hard-nosed, physical players, and Ethan fits that. Um, we've been able to recruit over in that area and have been happy with the guys that we've got from that area. Uh, Ethan comes from a great family. Uh, dad's a football coach, teacher, and, uh, and so we're excited about the makeup that, that Ethan brings. Lewis Wilbert, another kid, Ridgeway, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, so three guys from the Memphis area that I said I'm 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 uh, personally excited that we can get uh, some some Memphis guys up here and, and signed. I know how important it is to our alumni in Memphis. Uh, they would be proud of the of these three guys that we're bringing up here. Lewis is a is a great kid. Uh, he's a um, uh, a guy that that'll start out and play inside linebacker for us. He can run. Uh, he's physical at the point of attack, and so. Uh, another kid that will get up here and and uh, and just get to work and and so those those are our those are our high school and, and our two transfer signees. Uh, like I've said before, I, truly this is an exciting day. But like I told all of them today when they were uh, they were calling me and FaceTiming me when they signed. Really, my favorite day. This is an important day because without this day, you don't get to the next steps. But my favorite day is when they get here in the summertime and they move in and, and you go out there and you start watching them work out and put their head down and then you then you know what you really have and so uh, you, you know all of these guys we talk about it's a it's a four or five year uh, commitment of just developing and getting better having the mindset that that you're always having to get better and um, that's what I believe this group uh, uh, brings to the table is bringing to Carbondale. That's what we set out to go and get when we when we put out uh, with our staff the, the the things that we were looking for is uh, guys with a great attitude that want to get better. And if you come up here with that, the rest takes care of itself. And so I believe what we've got uh, a really great group of kids um, that that'll fit right into this this culture and this family. Okay, thank you, Coach. We'll open it up for questions and go first to Jason first. Hey, Coach. I wanted to ask you about this is going to be a unique year, this upcoming year, where you have kids can play two seasons in one year. Did you try to use that as an advantage as a recruiting tool? You mean for the transfers? Then, but also, if I know if I'm an incoming freshman and I'm excited, hey, you know, I want to try to see if I can win playing time, knowing, to me, it's a unique situation. So I think all the way around, because I don't know, you may have a freshman, incoming freshman that may have a chance to win a starting job. So for transfers or anybody, to me, I think it's a unique situation that if I come in, man, I get to play two seasons in one year. Yeah, I mean, so for the, for the freshmen, the, the, it'll just be, you know, the same. I mean, they won't be a part of the two seasons in one year. So okay. uh, and the freshmen won't be here until the fall. So these guys won't, won't be here until the 2021 season. Now, it's unique uh, for the guys like James Caesar and Jacquez Sloan that, that are coming here and will show up in January and be playing in a season in February. Uh, that usually doesn't happen. Uh, but the way that the rules are, and uh, if those guys didn't play a fall season uh, at their previous school, so Jaquez uh, got in the portal before their season started at West Kentucky, he's eligible to play for us. Same thing with James that coming from a Division II school, they didn't have a season like us, he's eligible to play. So I think that's a unique opportunity um, for these high school kids. Uh, I believe it, it, th they will get back to some sort of normalcy I would hope uh, by next fall when they when they show up it'll be training camp it'll be their first season it'll be a fall season now the, the rest of the team will be just be coming off of another season uh, but for the high school kids it'll it'll be pretty normal well the only reason I mentioned high school because I thought you when you went down the list I thought you said there was a, a freshman coming in that uh, 
was coming in early. Yeah, no, there's a kid. I mean, that that's always been a rule too. I mean, Jalen Bates is uh, graduating high school early. Uh, he's going to come here. He'll be on our team, but they're not eligible to play in the season. So the the rule from the NCAA, which is a great rule. I mean, that high school kid just coming, showing up and, and being, having to be put in and play at, technically as a high schooler um, probably isn't, it, it's not the best uh, for the kid. And so he'll be here. It'll be a great opportunity for him just to get you know, used to things, practicing, training with our with our strength staff almost on an individual basis. He'll get his first semester of school under his belt. But we've done that each year, usually with one or two guys that uh, that graduate early. You see that more and more across the country. So, um, but yeah, that that's the only high school kid that'll be here this spring. You know, with the guys that you have in the pros right now, and then you mentioned as you went down the list some big DBs. Do you, do you feel like you're selling, you know, as, as DBU? Because I feel like the kids that in the one game that we saw against SEMO, the Tensors that came in, they made an impact. Uh, last few years, that, that secondary is something that we've all talked about. Has is that, is that been kind of a selling point? Because it seems like you, you got some uh, new kids coming in in that, in that area as well, some athletes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, for sure, we're proud of proud of the guys that have come here and that are get an opportunity to play on Sunday. I mean, if you would ask all, if you would ask our current team, I mean, with their what their goals and aspirations, I'd say ninety nine percent of them are going to tell them they'd love an opportunity to play in the NFL, and and that's what this school and this program will give you an opportunity to play at the highest level. Those guys that are at, that are there right now are proving that. And so um, same DB coaches, you know, as far as uh, Coach Rogers have been here the entire time with me. Coach Petrino has come in and done an outstanding job with those guys. And so uh, whether it's a transfer or it's a young high school kid, uh, you know, really the four guys that we've got in the NFL right now playing DB, two of them we, we brought here as high school kids and they developed and played, played through Ryan Neal and, uh, and Jeremy Chin. And then two of them transferred here. Craig James from Minnesota was in our first recruiting class that we took as a transfer, played two seasons. And then Madre Harper uh, transferred here uh, from Oklahoma State, played two seasons in 18 and 19. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so whether you're a transfer or a high school kid, I think that we've proven that we can, um, you, you get, you're going to get an opportunity here. You're going to be able to develop in a great system and uh, get an opportunity. And the last thing for me is just with the recruiting, like recruiting from the areas, meaning this, I've been here a full year, and yet I still haven't been able to watch football in, in the state of Illinois. What was the challenge, I guess, relying on relationships, I think it was one of the first thing that you said, not being able to see a lot of them because there's kids this year still haven't played, and then to be able to, like you said, win areas, uh, getting kids from Memphis, St. Louis, Georgia, Florida, can, can you talk about those, those areas, uh, the challenges of one, not having the football in state and then also being able to get areas that you seem to be really excited about? Uh, yeah, I think when, when, you, when you talk about recruiting, I mean, signing kids are, is, not a, is not a hard thing to do as far as going out and get guys to sign letters of intent and, uh, and come here. It's about signing the right guys. It's about signing the right fit. It's about finding guys that, that – um, that fit what you're trying to build and and uh, seeing the guys that come here and, and stay and graduate. And so I think that's where you, you've got to do a, a great job in the evaluation process. That's what recruiting comes down to. I've said this each year. I mean, you, you, you do it, Jason. I mean, scroll through your Twitter and you follow other college teams. I mean, everybody's got the best signing class today, right? Everybody's excited. You know, the best DBs, the best four-star, three-star, that, this. Uh, everybody's excited. But next week, that all kind of goes away. It's about did you, did you sign the right guys that are going to come here and put their head down, develop work, be great teammates, know there's going to be ups and downs, there's going to be obstacles in the way. Did you? So really, it's about finding the mentality just as much it is as a highlight video out there, I believe that if you just go off of highlight, huddle highlight videos, 
you know, anybody in high school, I would hope that's being recruited at this level can put together a three to five minute highlight video of all their good plays. Uh, we got to go out there and find the bad plays and the mediocre plays and decipher uh, does he have what it takes to come here and, and uh, be what we want it to be. So regardless of where they're at, uh, what areas they're at, we don't ever set out and say, hey, we're going to sign two from this area and five from this area and one from this area. Uh, to me, it's about just finding the right guys. No matter where they come from, uh, that's what we're going to set out to do. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Okay, next up we'll go to Matt Barty with questions. Coach, I know you were just talking about it there and trying to find the right guy, but uh, I know for you specifically, if you can recruit from your backyard and get from the Southern Illinois region, you like to try to get a kid or two. How hard has it been with no schools playing football this fall to recruit from the Southern Illinois area specifically, right? Or have you even bothered to look because there's no football? Yeah, I mean we're constantly looking. I mean we're we're always. I mean right now we're we're already we're already on to the 2022 class as far as you know the the initial recruiting process as far as gaining uh, the list and the high school coaches have a huge part of who you're recruiting. You know, if uh, the high school coaches around here, all of them have our our information. They pick up the phone and and say, hey, this kid can play for you, then that, that's where it all starts is the relationships. And so uh, obviously right now without a senior year, now, I mean, football, whether you, when you're maybe you're 16 years old at the beginning of your junior year to where you're at right now, you gain a lot. You become a lot better player. I promise you if anybody recruited me off my junior film, I wouldn't have been recruited by anybody. Now in my senior year, I was a lot better player. And so – that's probably where some of those kids that you feel bad about that really took jumps and matured and developed and are just completely different players from their junior to senior year, you know, you just don't have the film uh, to, to validate that right now. But uh, so I'd say that's probably the toughest things for the guys. The guys that we signed without senior years, we had evaluated uh, and knew about and recruited off their junior film and then just stayed with them. about this time last year you were ranked for the first time in your head coaching career uh you started the year ranked beat up ranked simo you had jeremy drafted in the second round of the nfl draft uh last year you just missed the playoffs has those things helped make the recruiting job easier um yeah i mean obviously all that stuff helps of course i mean uh you know it's a. Uh, I don't know about easier. Again, I think it goes down to finding the right guys. I think that, you know, it validates what you're doing, and that's what you want to sell to your recruits, that what you're saying that you can back up and show the results. And, uh, you know, in the first three years, we, uh, I wouldn't trade any of that. I've had to get better as a evaluator, uh, as a head coach of, of what, who we're taking and why we're taking them. And, um, all those things and without experience you, you don't gain those things so uh, I, I think that's where it's at it just comes down to to uh, to, to taking the right guys but of course I mean the success that your guys have at the next level winning is pro is the number one thing in your program I mean you got it winning helps out in every area of everything and so uh, we we've done more of that but I feel like more of that is on the horizon for Saluki football on the roster now. How is that competition going to affect the secondary and the, uh, the, the room and uh, trying to get the best guy on the field at all times? Well, it's just going to make them better. I mean, it, you, competition makes makes us all better. And so you're going to have to – got to bring it every day, uh, whether it's a walkthrough, it's practice, it's individual <laughs> sessions. Um, you know, there, there's a talented group. Uh, James, like I said, I, I mean, I, James is a part of that DBU. He was a, in the first re recruiting class. He's been a part of, of knowing all of these guys that, that are a part of it. He's been, he's been or he was a part of the, the very beginning. And so uh, he's a talented guy that we got to find, uh, you know, with Quay coming back, playing in the springtime. Um, 
you know, the, those guys, and that's our job as coaches to find where they fit. Uh, we've all got to be humble and put up the team first. That doesn't matter what position that you're playing. And uh, those guys will do that. Those guys care about each other. They love each other. And uh, the ultimate thing, like I just said, is winning. And, and not, not one guy has went on uh, to the NFL because it was about some stats. I, I mean, I, I, right now as a recruiter, too, I mean, I'll, I'll get emails. I'll get texts that say, like, hey, this guy passed for 4,000 yards or he had 92 tackles. Like, we're not looking at stats. I've never said to a, an assistant coach, like, how, you know, what's his stats? Like, I want to see the video. I want to know about him. There's so many things that go into stats and all of those things. Same thing that comes in with the NFL scouts that sit down with us as coaches when they come and, rec you know, scout our players, that none of them say, well, you know, how many tackles do you have? Do you have 90 or do you have 68? They want to put on the film. What was it? Did you make the plays that you were supposed to make? Uh, what's he doing? What's his makeup? What's his character? Same thing when we're recruiting these guys, and, and, and I feel confident in the, the makeup of our secondary. A lot of good players back there, a lot of different personalities, but ultimately we got to come together for the common good of our team. Final one for me, Coach. Uh, no quarterbacks currently in this recruiting class. Your top two Correa Stone uh, close to graduation. How important for you is it to find someone to sign in February at the quarterback position? Yeah, no, I, I think that it's um, I think it's important for um, you know all of our guys. Uh, or, I mean, all always to sign a, a quarterback. But again, we got to you got to sign the right guys. And so, it, you, again, it, you could go out and sign one. We want to find the right fit, the right guy. Um, you, you'll see us sign a, a quarterback uh, in this class at, at some point. Thanks, Coach. Okay, next up, uh, Tom Hefferman, questions. Uh, yeah, Nick, you, you have a lot of seniors, uh, but you have a lot of guys coming back next fall. Do you have a lot of conversations with this class about playing time, or were they excited to compete for playing time uh, next fall? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, honestly, same conversation. That, that conversation wasn't really different. I mean, as a true freshman, uh, especially with the recruit, with the rules now, with the four games that you can play, I mean, you got to put your head down and, and expect uh, have high standards for yourself. Try to come in here and compete and play. It's college football. It's not Pop Warner. Whenever guys all get a certain amount of playing time, I mean, and I've never known a coach uh, that's not playing uh, the guys that have deserved to get out there and play. I mean, we're all in this to to win, um, and to, and so they all just have to come and compete. It needs to be a competitive environment. Uh, but they all need to just come down here and put their best foot forward. The rest will take care of itself. And that's really the conversation I have with guys each and every year. I've never promised anybody that they're going to come in here and play. they gotta, they got to want to earn it. And honestly, we wouldn't recruit a kid if, if that's what the questions they were asking. They want to uh, wanna come in here and just work, and, and, um, and that's what this group will do. You know, did you have one position as a, as a major priority for the 21 class? To, for this no, I think, I think we hit on uh, where we wanted to be, uh, you know, going into this year. Like I said, this is the, I, I would say each staff uh, across the country probably is going to, to maybe view this recruiting cycle differently than others, some going after transfers, some – um, I love our current team. I love our team. And of course, of the, the guys we have coming back that are seniors. So you got to figure out a way to bring those guys back, but also sign a, a, a freshman class for the future of your program. And so I feel like we did that. Um, obviously, we talked about uh, signing a quarterback in this class, but each year, you know, we set out to sign a certain number at each position and feel like we're, we're right there pretty close of accomplishing those goals. As, as far as your, your 22 class, you kind of mentioned that. I mean, is it, how hard has it been to, to start relationships with those types of guys, you know, over Zoom and over video? Well, right now, it, most all the, the Zoom in and, and, and the 
all of that has been with this 21 class. The, the 22 classes now is just uh, the initial stages of, of things. So um, it's like anything. I mean, we don't really talk about the, the, uh, the problems. It is what it is for everybody in the country as far as Zooming and, and uh, telephone calls and, and those type of things. Uh, so I, I think that it, it is what it is. I mean, you, you've got to do the best job you can. It's like anything. You got to put time into it. You got to put your 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 heart into it, your effort into it, and uh, and establish those relationships. I mean, it takes time, and so uh, you know. So I think that that's where we're at. I think with the 22 class, I'm optimistic that that it'll be it'll be different for them. I think that we'll be able to get back on the road this summer, see some guys, get them here uh, safely, have uh, some camps. Uh, some visits, those type of things. So I'm excited for the 22 class as well.